Fantastic. Okay, I am the last uh, speaker before lunch, <laughs> and uh, I think I've got 20 minutes. Is that, is that accurate? All right, so a little bit about 66 Degrees. Mo did a great job of introducing uh, an example of one of our engagements. I want to talk a little bit more about our background. Uh, we are a developer-led, engineering-led systems integrator exclusively focused on Google. Uh, we have been doing this for a very long time and, and we're one of the first firms to actually get specialized in Google in the application development specialization and since have expanded out from there through data and analytics, migration, infrastructure, MSP, Google Workspace, and Looker. Uh, and so we are a full, full service systems integrator that runs across practice areas uh, that cover all of those areas of the specialization. So from infrastructure, working on VM migrations and standard um, secure landing zones to application development, as I mentioned before, doing GKE development, horizontally scalable applications, uh, an innovation lab collaboration, data and analytics is what we're here to talk about today. So why are we all in on Google? Uh, there are a number of different cloud providers. A lot of systems integrators uh, exist in the marketplace that hedge their bets and, and work with, with multiple providers. For us, we have been all in on Google from day one and have never taken a step outside of the Google ecosystem. And it comes down to culture and thinking about problems from a first principle standpoint. Uh, my favorite, I, I was a, a Google fanboy from the very beginning of search. Uh, when you think about the, the unbelievable scale challenge of indexing all of the world's information all the time. Uh, and back then, the answer was, well, let's just get bigger and bigger vertical servers. And that was the mindset of everybody in data, everybody in application development. And Google said, no, that's never going to work. <laughs> Economically, that just simply won't work to solve this kind of a problem. And flipped the whole script and created horizontally scalable container approach to, to compute at the scale of search problems. So today, Google runs 4 billion containers <laughs> per week. Uh, the other cloud providers still don't really even have a strategy for how, uh, you know, what is the right way, an opinionated way to run containers at scale. Uh, when you think about security, uh, Google has, zero tr has a concept of zero trust. The operating system, Chrome OS and Google Workspace, never a single reported incident of ransomware. You think about the, the billions of dollars of impact that ransomware has had uh, in the technology industry and in business, Google never a single incident. This company thinks about problems from first principles and creates actual solutions that work and don't continue to cost you money. Um, another side story with Google starting up, not having a whole lot of money and thinking about things horizontally meant they weren't going out and buying really expensive shiny servers, they were going and buying used computers and PCs uh, and stitching them together into a grid network to create the back end of search. Well, the irony and the side effect of doing that is those servers, those hardware pieces and components failed all the time. And so their engineering teams had to become you know, really adept at understanding and predicting when things were gonna fail and recover from them gracefully. And this, this concept has, aver has evolved into uh, a thing we call site reliability engineering. So you'll hear this term quite a bit, SRE, if you Google it. Google has written books about it. But it grew out of this, you know, the, the concept of we're going to build a grid computer, it's going to fail all the time. Uh, and as a result, we've got to get really, really, really good at being reliable and monitoring and alerting. And all the things that historically were just sort of put over here in the operations department and alerts were always noisy and that was just how it was. No, that's not how Google approaches uh, the reliability side and the operations side. And they bring that to all of the SIs that work with Google through that specialization for MSP. And so they study, they, they, and, and all of the specializations, yes, they're concerned about how we do app dev, how we do data and analytics, but what they're really asking, really, really want to make sure that we get right, audited by a third party is, how do you do the operations side? How good are you at helping customers stay online? And if they go down, how do they get back up online extremely quickly? Um, last point I want to make on why in on, all in on Google. Mo mentioned it perfectly, like we're in the cloud sort, we were in the cloud sorta because the servers were just running in VM mode. 
Uh, and this is, a, this is a fascinating moment in our industry because I believe that there was a book called The Innovator's Dilemma that Clayton Christensen wrote a long time ago. And it effectively meant big companies get really, really good at an, operationalizing their existing business models. And most, most of the players in this space have been selling VMs. And they're invested in VMs. They're invested in the operating system and licensing the operating system. That's what their whole business model is predicated on. And in that situation, you can't pivot you know, a giant ship like that into something that's more valuable for customers, like containers and managed services. And when you dig under the hood for even their quote unquote managed services, you're really just still provisioning a whole lot of VM computing power versus the kind of billion plus user scale that Arturo just walked through in terms of how Google databases run. So a couple of quick examples, um, customer stories. My favorite in the last year was a healthcare data provider who wanted to move, also move from uh, AWS to Google. It was a 30 terabyte database that managed the, uh, the results of life sciences experiments and data analytics in drug uh, manufacturing. And they had a requirement for no more than 30 minutes of downtime. And when we first started this process, uh, the basic you know, replica approach to moving was a full eight hours behind. And so the way that this project unfolded was working side by side with the customer to make sure that we could get that replica tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And we did this all in a, in a lab environment with a developer first mindset. And as a result, uncovered a lot of opportunities to improve their database and how it actually operated so that we could get that down to, uh, to less than 30 minutes. The final cutover was less than eight minutes as a result of this. Um, next is an example of a, a larger scale migration coming from SQL Server over to, to Google. Um, this was, you know, the, the, the net net here is looking at and making sure you're running load tests uh, before you actually cut and make that, that migration. So in this case, they really needed to be able to support 1,000 plus connections at a time. Being able to set that up in an automated fashion, in a really quick fashion, was, uh, was, was key. Um, and then in retail, moving all the way into Spanner uh, for a commercial pricing uh, uh, application as you just heard about, Spanner is the engine behind Google. It's underneath a lot of Google products. This is un also unlike anything in the industry because it was built for Google search and the, the products that live in, inside of Google proper. It has had hundreds of billions of dollars of R&D investment and has been you know, battle tested at, at a ridiculous amount of scale. The caveat of that is they had discovered in order to do that multi-master, you need to get rid of the concept of auto incremental keys. So if, you're, if your database is, and most of us just have the auto increment turned on as the way you generate a primary key, Spanner cannot use that as a, as a primary key and do multi-master. So you need something that's not monotonic and incrementing. In the process of doing these migrations, it's very simple, but you need to know about it and you need to, to test and make sure your application can switch to something that's going to be able to do scale at that, um, uh, at, at that scale. So a little bit about our migration methodology. Um, design is about key questions. So we make space in about three weeks to understand where you are, make some critical key decisions. We do automation and tooling. So we get everything running in infrastructure as code, make sure that every, all of the components that you need to do the migration from the source to the destination are in place. And then we do sprints in a one week fashion with our delivery, agile delivery team. And here, it's going to depend on what kind of migration it is. We call them factory migrations, where you're moving a whole lot of databases, or the crown jewel migration, where it's literally your whole business. So in Mo's case, it was a, an example of a crown jewel. And we're going to iterate and get that cutover window down to your business requirements. A few key decisions that get made in this course of the technical design um, is to make sure, you know, how are we going to connect from where your data is today to, to Google Cloud? How are we going to do security? How are we going to do alerting and monitoring uh, and making sure that we're not an overly noisy uh, database alerting system? And more importantly, we're using the SRE practices to find the four golden signals of uh, how things are predicting to be behaving in the future. And then looking at our cutover procedure, really understanding and, and documenting 
and making sure that that's in code so that when we go into our test mode, we can run experiments and do those cutovers in an automated fashion. So what does tooling look like? This is all Terraform. This is an example of that Aurora to Postgres uh, Cloud SQL migration that I talked about earlier, the 30 terabyte migration. Everything that gets created through Terraform, it's reviewed by the client's security and IT team. They verify and validate that everything is working according to standards, and then we're able to deploy it in all three environments, prod, test, and dev. Um, as a result of that, we're also able to do initial, very simple, um, easy to execute, rather, custom performance test queries. So everybody says, my database is different. I've got it super tuned to the way I need it to run. We can run side-by-side -side comparisons of those two. So whether it's going from AWS to GCP or on-prem to GCP, doesn't matter which database engine, this is all out of the box using Google native tooling to get a side-by-side -side so your DBAs can have confidence and trust that the move to a managed database is going to be as performant as what you've got today. Okay, a few key takeaways. Uh, we call it liberate your data. Moving, doing a migration in a database context is an opportunity to up your game in, in, in think like Google. So thinking about things like Google means moving to CI CD for all database schema changes. It means doing your infrastructure with IAC and CI CD. It means no humans in prod. It means thinking about the CD side of CI CD. That means continuous deployment. Like can we actually get to a place where we can release new versions of our database in a continuous fashion? And what that means is we're gonna simplify our database. Thinking like Google means not stacking a whole bunch of stuff vertically. It means getting smaller and smaller. And that means using your database for really what it's supposed to be used for, not doing a whole bunch of vendor specific capabilities and add-ons because they were easy to implement and create lock-in for you and make you unable to move. Um, and then obviously making best practice for schemas. So what's our database migration program? Marketing team, uh, please forgive me, we call it Route 66, <laughs> a play on our name. Uh, this is a complete solution, you know, end-to-end, -end, all the parts I just described. Uh, the databases, everything that's been talked about today, it makes a very predictable fixed cost uh, opportunity for you, so it de-risks your, your challenge in making that migration. Uh, and there are multiple sources of Google funding available uh, as, as a result of this program to help customers move to a more scalable, more reliable, more secure uh, database engine. And then we've got an, included a sample uh, timeline here where it's three weeks to get that proof of value that Mo talked about that was so incredibly important to validate that this was actually gonna work in his environment, and then two, week, uh, two weeks to do a t uh, about a 20, 20 database migration with um, wave planning coming up front and making sure we've got that cutover testing all done in a development and, and test environment so that there's confidence from the business that it can be moved. That is all I have from the content slips. Questions? Nathan, yeah. Yeah, m maybe you touched it on the uh, last slide, but just uh, you mentioned the three-step design, tooling, and execution, right? Where, where the uh, proof of concept, kind of the entire solution? Because the database is maybe the main part, but the solution as a the solution requires a POC, I believe, right? Yeah, great, great point. So we're doing that in that first three weeks. Uh, a, a that's, that's our goal. In that three weeks, we're doing a proof of value or proof of concept to validate that your application can work in a managed database context. Um, and, or if we're doing a heterogeneous migration, we're going to validate that the, all of the data that's coming from a SQL Server database and coming to a Postgres database, whether it's on Eloy or Cloud SQL, everything is the same. So we didn't miss anything and the application performs the same. So we're gonna to try to get to that point as fast as possible so that you know and have confidence. Uh, and we might not do everything, we might boil it down to the biggest risks or the hardest parts of your application um, and focus on those. But we wanna validate and, and approve, we basically wanna validate assumptions as, as soon as possible. Leah. Yes. Um. 
Thank you. This is great. Um, as far as resource allocation from the customer standpoint, what is the expectation there to do something like this? Like what would be the expected participation from their end? It depends on the scope and scale of, of the engagement, but an average like this, this is one we're working on right now with a 20, uh, 20 database um, migration. We're going to have two people from their data department, and then we're going to have access to all the different application owners for multiple four-hour sessions to get understand the application structure and how it works and what its dependencies are. Okay. And would you describe that portion of it through this rather than the Yes. Yeah, the best model here is we're doing co-dev, and if we're, especially if we're doing a factory style where you need to move many, many databases, we're going to want to be able to work with you uh, and train your team how to be able to drive some of that with our expertise to help mitigate any issues. Great. Thank you. I noticed you had the uh, knowledge transfer start. Uh, and I know that can be a loaded situation depending on your client. Why do you have that start as your last uh, block? Oh, great question. So that is the most important part of this, <laughs> uh, is transferring and not making you beholden to us on an ongoing basis. Um, even though we can be the managed service provider if you choose to, to work with us, that's not our, our sole model. We are an engineering-led company, so we're, we're in this to work as a professional services partner. Um, and quite often that means that maybe another partner is doing the, 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 the ongoing work with you and, and might be there on your, on your, you know, as your reseller of choice for, for Google Cloud. Uh, so knowledge transfer for us is absolutely the most important part. Any other questions? All right, great discussion, Eric. Thank you. Uh, folks over the phone, any questions for the virtual attendees? All right. So why don't we uh, go into the next steps and we could wrap up uh, for some networking lunch. Sounds good. Let's get there. So a couple of things I'd like to call out. And Eric, thank you so much. Uh, great presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody listening over the phone uh, and on in person out here, we do have some action items that you can take away. Um, Eric, you want to talk about the data assessments? Yeah, so the, the key here is, the first step is understanding what the database complexity looks like. And there is a tool uh, that Google provides funding for that, called MIGVisor uh, that will do that assessment and understand you know, what you're working with. That'll give a good sense of what the estimated cost would be uh, to do a full migration. Uh, and that's the key here is that Google's got funding right now called Move to Managed uh, to pay for that proof of value uh, and proof of concept. That's right, yeah. So the three things uh, from the offering perspective that you guys can take away, and ladies and gentlemen both, uh, we do database assessments uh, with a partner, 66. Uh, you know, we fund the assessment, and basically they kind of give you the lay of the land on what's running, where to migrate, what are the offerings in terms of our cloud services, what's the right fit for the right database, uh, so that's one of the offers. Again, we do proof of concepts along with 66, right? Uh, so if you need to do a POC or want to pilot an application on GCP managed databases, we have that offering as well. Uh, so kindly leverage that. And the last piece of the puzzle is hands-on workshops. So if you guys need to get your hands dirty, uh, make sure you want to mess around with Google Cloud managed databases like Spanner, Cloud SQL, uh, Big Table, we do have those offers as well, so feel free to leverage uh, those offerings along with 66 and leverage them as a provider to help you out doing the hands-on workshops. Again, that's at no cost to our customers, but again, come with some uh, pilots and POCs that you really want to drive within your organization. Uh, so that's all. Uh, all right, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.